This section is about groundwater permeability and the seepage of water through soil. By now you'll appreciate that it is important to know what the pore pressure is in geotechnical problems. In the hydrostatic case, that is with no flow, U is just gamma W times the depth Z below the water table. However, we are also interested in the case where water is seeping through the ground or flowing under a hydraulic gradient. Bernoulli's equation that you will have encountered in fluid mechanics also applies to soils. However, since the flow velocity is normally very low, the V squared over 2G term is negligible, leaving the total head equal to the sum of the pore pressure head U over gamma W and the elevation head Z subscript E. Two groundwater flow regimes that can arise are artesian conditions and under drain conditions. <clears throat> in artesian conditions, as illustrated on the left, the water pressure is influenced by a higher water table elsewhere, as the aquifer is confined by a layer of low permeability above. This leads to pressures which are in excess of hydrostatic, i.e. U is greater than gamma W times Z. A schematic of underdrain conditions is shown on the right. Water was pumped for centuries from the clay at great depths below London to provide water for the city. As a result, the pore water pressure as measured by the standpipe pitometer in the clay layer will register a water pressure U which is less than gamma W times Z. For groundwater to flow, a change in total head H is required, and this is illustrated in the two figures. <clears throat> On the left, the two points A and B have different elevation heads and different pore pressure heads, but the total heads are the same, so there is no flow of water between A and B. On the right, we've installed a sheet pile wall so that we can excavate on one side. Here the total heads at A and B are no longer the same, so water will flow between them, around the base of the sheet pile wall. This will cause the pore pressures to equalise at A and B. Darcy's law can be applied to flow in soils, and it states that the flow rate Q is given by the cross-sectional area of the flow, A, times the permeability of the soil, K, times the hydraulic gradient I. The diagram explains that the hydraulic gradient is the head loss, in this case minus dH, divided by the length over which it is lost, dx. Q over A can also be written as the discharge velocity, V subscript D, but this is not particularly meaningful as water can only flow through the void space. The true seepage velocity V subscript S is VD divided by the porosity nita. <coughs> Here are typical permeability values for different soil types. The values of K are influenced by pore size or particle size distribution and particle shape, soil structure and viscosity of the pore fluid. It is important to make the link between density, void ratio and permeability. As density increases, void ratio reduces and permeability reduces. For the purposes of this course, we assume that the permeability is the same in all directions. But in reality, sedimentary soils that were deposited in layers have greater permeabilities in the horizontal direction than in the vertical direction. There are a number of ways of estimating the permeability of a soil, including empirical methods, laboratory and field tests. The first method is Hazen's formula. The permeability can be calculated directly from the D10 value derived from the grading curve but note that this applies to clean sands only. 
<coughs> the second method is the constant head permeability test, which is relevant to coarse soils. The test arrangement is shown on the right. The head in, in the tank above the soil sample is kept constant. Measurements of flow rate Q and head difference H between the two standpipe manometers allowed the permeability to be estimated directly from Darcy's law as shown in yellow. The falling head permeability test is used for fine soils. This time the change in head in the upper tube from H0 to H1 corresponding to a certain time period is noted. Again Darcy's law is used but some integration is required in this case to arrive at the solution. The well pumping test is a field test and it has the benefit of capturing the permeability of a large area of soil that can't be achieved from small laboratory samples. The principle is that three wells are bored. Water is pumped from one and the steady state flow rate Q is measured. The other two are observation wells at distances R1 and R2 from the pumping well. These allow the drop or drawdown in groundwater level due to the pumping to be monitored. In order to derive the permeability, we need to make an, we need to make an assumption called Dupuis assumption. It states that the hydraulic gradient at any distance or from the pumping well is constant with depth and equal to the slope of the water table. In other words, I is equal to dhdr. At a distance r from the well, the surface area through which the flow takes place is A is equal to 2 pi r times h. Using Darcy's law, Q is equal to aki as our starting point, we can derive an expression for k after some integration. <coughs> 